Martínez, Jill Martin von Sita, a couple of talking there about Matthews too. Currently, I'm going to talk about the writing Matthews plugins with help from modules from Sita, because there are some modules to make your life easier and to write more robust and faster plugins. I'm actually contributing to the Ops View project. It's a, it's a web interface uh, for configuring Matthews. Uh, and it's written in Perl with Catalyst and it's on top of Matthews. So uh, everything you use with Matthews is, is compatible. Uh, so, uh, first of all, do you know what Matthews is? I suppose no. Uh, how many of you monitor uh, with some type of application? That's good. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone with helps you? Couple. And how many of you write, have written your own plugins? Uh, I like to say that Nachius is the monitoring tool that doesn't know how to monitor anything. <laughs> it's more like a monitoring engine. The, the real work is really done by the plugins. Nachius only knows how to schedule plugins. You, you tell it and monitor this every five minutes. Then if you see some problem or we'll recheck it faster, then alert me. Uh, the engine will see who is interested in those alerts, sending emails, or well, Nachius really doesn't know how to send alerts either. It doesn't know how to send emails. Those are plugins too. So it's really based on the Unix philosophy of having a well-defined interface uh, to communicate with uh, with the plugins. And really the plugins are the ones that do all the dirty work. So, uh, Nachius basically executes your plugin, your plugin interacts with the system you want to monitor, and uh, your plugin will communicate through STDL uh, the results of, of the check, and the status through the exit code. So, basically, the output through STDL, the most important part is the first line of, of output. You see that this goes here to the status information and the exit code that gets converted into OK, warning, preview, etc. You'll see, well, I don't think you see it too well. Yeah, I don't see nothing. <laughs> but uh, here there's a pipe. And uh, some sort of uh, sort of structured information. It's saying connections uh, equal zero dot three uh, common common common. Okay, that gets put in everything after the pipe gets put into performance data. It's really structured information for other tools uh, to be to be able. Uh, so, uh, even from Nachius' point of view, Nachius will only do a macro completion. Uh, if you were passing parameters like dollar host address dollar, it will fill in the host address for you. Uh, and uh, basically, that execute, expect that. From Nachius's point of view, even NRP, uh, do you know it? Okay, NRP is a plugin too. It, it lets you execute plugins on other machines. So uh, Nachius really doesn't have a protocol to call plugins on remote machines. It's just a plugin that does that work for it. So you can redefine everything if you want. So let's 
Let's try to tackle our, our plugins with uh, with the, the the tools that are on CPAN. The first rule, when I say, is that you have to convince yourself that you want to write the plugin because uh, there are lots of people uh, writing plugins for natives. So, first question: Is it already done? Uh, you can go to macrosplugins.org. This is uh, this is, you normally have these plugins already installed and compiled uh, because Nacus distributes without any plugins. But on the web page, you you download the tar for the Nacus plugins project. Uh, the Nacus plugins project, the maintainer uh, is Tom Boom. Uh, is the guy who wrote the module in Pro to do the to do, to do plugins. So uh, the, the two projects are uh, are linked together. Then you have user contributed uh, plugins from monitoring exchange and exchange native sort. And uh, we can say that there's uh, some type of dark pen for native too. Lots of people mm, don't contribute their plugins via, via these, um, these portals. They just uh, put them on their web page and lots of time on Google will find them for you. So uh, sometimes you want to read them and you see that, oh, maybe this is not exactly what I want and you want to just change them a bit. So let's see what modules we have on CCAM uh, for us. Uh, Nacios plugin will say is the base. Okay. Uh, Nacios plugin will manage lots of work for us, and these are basically byproducts. Nacios plugin die nicely. This is mine. Uh, Nacios plugin three Ws three Ws mechanized. Mm -hmm. Sounds like some sort of fusion to do what type of way to uh, act like a browser. Thank you, Spurgeon. And, 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 and I'll talk about you, to you about Nacus plugin differences. Uh, it's basically a module I want to write and I would like some feedback. So, Nacus plugin. <coughs> Uh, when you want to write a plugin, uh, you have to handle the arguments that come in from Napier and uh, you want to input it to, to, to your plugin. So you want to get the data that you wanted for monitoring, let's say the number of processes on the box. And you have to calculate the state. You have to say, oh, well, the user wanted me to alert when uh, has a warning when I have 100 processes. And uh, it's critical when there are 200 processes. You have to calculate the state in, in function of what you got and of the arguments the user told you. And then you have to output performance data. This is. Uh, I put this one in small because no one does it. <laughs> and then other tools, uh, like Cacti and others, can draw graphs for you. And it's, um, it's very useful to have historical data on what's been happening. This month, uh, over the last year, has my flow gone up and down? Okay, so uh, it's Many people don't output it, and it's useful to have. So, uh, this is a good standard for your internal uh, for, uh, for your internal checks. But then, you, if you want to get a bit more advanced, you have to start handling a, a lot more things. So, you uh, most of Napier's plugins uh, accept the dollar B. To be more verbose, uh, they accept uh, minus H to show you the help. Uh, the help has to contain documentation of all the parameters it, it accepts. 
and then you have to get and manipulate the data that you want to monitor, you have to calculate the state, yeah, and you want to calculate the state in a flexible way so people don't, uh, don't bug you about, oh, uh, results that the way you, uh, you were thinking about the number of processes, well, uh, my requirements are, are a bit different. We'll see a bit about that later. So, and then you have to output the performance data because you want to be a good citizen. And uh, that adds another worry that's worrying about the format of that uh, performance data. So, it's a lot, of, a lot of work and I just wanted to monitor my something, my application, whatever you wanted to check. So, oh, let's see what we can do. Napier's plugin will basically care, uh, take care for all of this. That's a lot of headaches. Uh, uh, less. You just center yourself in getting and manipulating the data. I'm not saying you don't have to do anything to, hand, to handle arguments. You still have to say, I have an argument. Okay, so let's say, let's see how they how it uh, helps you. I like to say that the plugins can be uh, can be written in three simple steps. You have a setup. <coughs> Just make an instance of Napier's plugin. Uh, the only uh, non-optional parameter is usage. So. Uh, and then you call GitOps. And for free, you get um, a timeout option, a verbose option, the help option. If you execute your plugin with minus minus help or minus eight, you get, you get already a big description about your plugin. So uh, to set up, to, uh, sorry, to the constructor, you can also pass these parameters. The usage uh, will, it will interpolate in, in S the plugin name. Napier's plugin auto detects or tries to auto detect the name of, of your plugin. It will basically be the base name of the, of the file. Okay? So you can basically say when the user doesn't uh, doesn't give you the correct parameters. The usage will be displayed, okay, and uh, and um, the plugin name will be interpolated here. You can give it a version string. It's outputted in the help uh, URL for contacting the author, uh, a description of the plugin, the license that will be displayed in the help too. Uh, extra documentation, and you can overwrite the plugin name that it auto detected. So now you only have to say what are the arguments that I want my plugin to accept. And let's let's take a, a couple of examples. I want a warning parameter, long name, short name. It's a string. This is, this is a Nakios plugin hasn't reinvented the wheel here. It uses get.log, so you, most of you will be familiar with it. <coughs> uh, it asks you for a help. Okay, 